So there's the famous Darwin's Arch behind me. I'm on my Galapagos scuba diving expedition, and I can tell you, this expedition has been the most intensive trip I've ever taken. Much more intensive compared to all my big Rocky Mountain ski trips. It's basically 6.45 wake up call every morning, breakfast at seven, and then the first dive briefing at 7.45 into the Panga Zodiac boats by eight o'clock, and then our first dive. And that's repeated all day. And I can tell you by the end of the day, I've got no more gas in the tanks. I'm just physically drained and also mentally drained too. But hey, it's been pretty rewarding so far. Three whale sharks on one single dive. Four whale sharks on one day. So lots of hammerhead sharks. It's been a thrilling trip, but I tell you, this is one intensive trip. So we're here at Fernandina Island. This is the place where we're going to see the only known species of iguanas that actually feed in the water. Should be interesting. Okay, so if you want to scuba dive the Galapagos Islands and hit the best dive sites, do note some tips that I have to offer. If you go during the first half of the year, that's when the water temperatures are pretty well near tropical. You'll see lots of sharks. But if you want to see whale sharks like I did, you have to go during the second half of the year. That's whale shark season. 
So I went in September, and that's when water temperatures will get colder. For us, the water temperatures were around 23, 24 degrees Celsius, and they went down to about 15 or 16 degrees Celsius. They could get colder at some dive sites, so be prepared for colder waters. I didn't really have a problem because I brought a dry suit, but many of my fellow divers did get cold, and as a result, they did skip some dives because they just got too cold. Also, get ready for rough waters really fast moving currents. They are pretty nasty. When you get down to the bottom, you have to pretty well hang on to each rock. You're basically rock climbing, crawling along the bottom until you get to the viewpoint to watch the sharks. So do bring dive gloves. But do note, dive gloves like mine may not survive the week. But anyways, get ready for rough waters. Also, ask the dive masters about contingency plans because if you get swept away because of the currents, you need a plan. And that's what happened to me. I did get swept away and separated from the group during one dive, and as a result, I did have to abort one dive. Now, let's talk about those inflatable Panga or Zodiac boats. I really did not like using them. They were very challenging to use, especially in rough waters. But if you want to dive the Galapagos, there's really no way around them. Because in order to access the dive sites, there's no way they could have anchored the big liveaboard boats. So you need to use the inflatable boats. Tough thing about those pangas is not only do you have to get on them and dive off them, but to get back on them after each dive. That's tricky, especially in rough waters, because they want you to remove your weight belt, your BCD, and your fins before climbing back in. So just get ready for those. And because it's such an intensive schedule, do consider switching over to nitrox. I believe that all 16 guest divers and all three dive masters on our boat were breathing nitrox all week long. So it is a mecha trip magical moments in the water, but just get ready for some rough conditions. A lot of divers on our trip, with a lot more experience compared to what I have, they all pretty well agree. These were among the toughest, the most challenging conditions they've ever dived in. So just get the right preparation and then go for it. To see a video review and tour of the liveaboard that I use, the Calypso, check out my other video for that particular review. Thanks for watching.